So as we mentioned previously, you can't really just use MS1 data where it essentially gives you the mass of the compound to identify the compound because lots of different things can have the same mass. Isomers are all going to have the same exact mass. But you can identify compounds if you use a trick called MSMS to get fragmentation spectra. Let's look at an example. This data was taken on a different mass spectrometer, but it was also an ion trap, which is capable of getting MSMS or fragmentation spectra. So we start off with nothing in the mass spectrometer, but pretty soon here we're going to introduce cocaine in the mass spectrometer, and we get that peak at 304 that's indicative of cocaine. But just given that something has a mass of 304, we can't know it's cocaine, so we're going to turn on fragmentation and capture that 304 ion and see what it fragments into. So we're going to program the instrument to isolate only the 304 ion and put energy into it. And when we do, you see we get this peak at 182. So that is the fragment for that 304 ion. This is the MSMS spectrum for that 304 ion. So what this tells us is we had something in there that had a mass of 303 and protonated form 304, but that mass also fragments to give us a 182. Now these facts together allow us to give a positive identification for cocaine because only cocaine is going to have give you a peak at 304 in MS1 spectrum and then when you s isolate that 304 and fragment it give you 182 in an MSMS spectrum. And you can see here in this image that's the actual fragment that adds up to the uh, 182 for that peak. Now please note to explain all this to you, I've been distorting time, so you may have noticed that the chromatogram view on top has sort of paused and frozen at different points. Um, but that was just as an illustration. So next I'm going to show you how to set up these kinds of experiments on our mass spectrometer. So let's talk about how to set this method up. You're going to do what you did before and sort of boot up a default method, and we are going to return to those uh, mass spectrometer parameters. And we're going to program what's called a data dependent method. So what this means is that we are going to tell the mass spectrometer, run the LC run, okay, do the LC run, but in real time while you're doing the LC run, if you see something that looks like a new peak in the MS1 spectrum, like if all of a sudden a big ion pops up, then quickly try to isolate that ion and also acquire an MSMS spectrum for it. So what that does is we do one run and we get the MS spectra for all the peaks in the run, but also if a big MS ion popped up, then we get the MSMS spectrum for that ion. And usually this kind of scan lets you get MS and MSMS spectra in one LC run. You can also go ahead and just do one run where you just do MS1 spectra and then see what those peaks are, see what those mass spectral peaks are in that, and then program another run just to look at the MSMS of that peak. In other words, if I run uh, my unknown and I only get one chromatographic peak uh, with an MS1 spectrum, a, a major peak at uh, 289, then I can go back and run it again with a method where I've programmed it to just isolate and fragment 289 for the entire run. But in this method we can run one run and get MS and MSMS spectra in the same run. So we need to add what's called a scan event. We're going to go up here and say we want two scan events. Scan event 1 is going to be the MS. That's all set just like it was before. For scan event 2, we're going to make sure the mass range is right, again 50 to 500. Really importantly, we're going to click that dependent scan button. And that means it is going to uh, choose this scan MSMS based on the scan 1 MS data. So let's look at the data we get from this MSMS data dependent run. Now when you first open it up, it's not going to be very useful because it actually has several pieces of data piled on top of each other. 
So you need to separate these out. And the way that you're going to do that is you're going to right click on the chromatogram and select the auto filter option. And that's going to separate all the different chromatograms that it acquired. So this has made things a little hectic, but let's talk through all these different signals on the top window from top to bottom. So the top one is not very useful because it's all the other ones combined. The next one is the MS1 spectrum. And if you go back and look at the previous YouTube video, you'll see that this is the MS1 spectrum for that mixture of amphetamine, cocaine, um, methaquilone, and testosterone. The rest of those below that second chromatogram are MS2 spectra, where it thinks it saw a peak, and it went ahead and tried to isolate that peak and get an MSMS -MS spectrum for it. Now those third and fourth ones aren't very useful, but look at the fourth one. It saw that amphetamine peak, and it got the MSMS, -MS, so that is, when we click on that next one down there, that peak for amphetamine, but in the MSMS, -MS, that is the MSMS -MS spectrum for amphetamine. So in one run, we've captured the 136 in the MS1 spectrum and the 119 for the MS2 spectrum. We can do the same thing here for the cocaine peak. We click on the MS1 spectrum, the second one down, and we get that peak at 304. Now we go down to the bottom one where it got the MS2 spectrum for cocaine. You can see here we didn't use enough energy because we do get that 182 MS MS peak, but we still have a lot of that 304 left over. So it might be smart to go back and increase the MSMS -MS collision energy a little bit more. We'll look at the next peak over, that methaquilone peak. So if you go to that, that second one down, the MS1, and click on it, you get the 251. Now when we go to the MSMS -MS here, we can see uh, that we did do the MSMS -MS spectrum, but we still got 251. So we probably didn't put enough collision energy in there. And we would probably need to run this again. We'll go to the MS1 spectrum and see testosterone. We got an MS2 spectrum for that one, and we got a lot of good fragments here, so um, that's definitely going to tell us whether or not we have testosterone. So when you have this combination of MS1 and MS2 spectra, if you have the MS1 spectrum for a compound and a good fragmentation spectra for that compound, and they both match the standard, then that's a definitive identification.